Hey, this is Bruce Trujillo from Indy1023 here, sort of, with Kiltro. How's it going, guys? Hey, good. Good. You guys just released a new, your first music video yesterday for If I Lead. Uh, congrats, first off. Thank you. Thank you. So take me through the making of this video. There was actually a lot of involvement here in the band outside of just like making the music and being a part of the video. So uh, just take us through the, the process of making it and putting it out. Um, yeah, it was definitely a really long process. We didn't really know what we were doing, I think, when we set up. Um, it's obviously very, I mean, obviously making a video is very different from, from laying out a, a song. And I think we had this idea that the ideas would just sort of come and we, and of course they didn't. Um, you know, you need a lot of storyboarding and you need a lot of specificity. And um, so we were kind of, I guess struggling to 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 have a, a a thread, and so there were things that that came kind of late in the game, but there was a lot of metaphors and ideas that 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 came very early. Um, the spinning plate was one of them that we were sort of toying with for a long time, um, and we've been kind of posting that that imagery. I mean, for some time, there was just like this this the analog projector was something we knew we wanted to incorporate from the beginning. Um, it was something we've been bringing to our live shows. Uh, for a long time, um, just the idea of using a projector as this way of having like projected imagery and then people watching or like the idea of watching or people being sucked into like a kind of dream. Um, you know, this idea of like fiction is escapism. And then that was a big thing in the album too, of people being in a kind of routine or a loop and using like their imaginations to escape that kind of routine. And um, that's very much what If I Lead is about. Um, so we wanted to have a video that kind of paralleled maybe the, um, just the mood or that general feeling of escapism, um, even if it didn't really follow the same sort of specific like narrative arc. Um, I think to do that, it would have been, we would have needed a lot more money, I guess, because the, the song has this kind of like carnival dreamlike thing that would have been really crazy. But, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a long time coming just because they were just, you know, filling four minutes is, is hard. But, uh, but yeah, in the end, like, we, it turned out we actually had, in, in a lot of ways, almost like too, uh, too many ideas. And we had to kind of cut things down and, and figure out sort of what was like the, the meat of it and what communicated like the concepts the best and what, um, what was the most conducive to like having a kind of thread and what kept things compelling in terms of the imagery and, you know, what, was like dance that line between um, doing service of like the ideas without being too heavy handed or like what was too abstract or, you know, um, felt grounded and, and also told a kind of story. So I don't know. I like where it, where it ended up and it was definitely a big learning experience for all of us. And um, I mean, at the end of the day, it was, it just, I think it looks great. And Evan of Otherworldly did this, you know, fantastic job. And, yeah. We just found um, Evan online really and just searched him and, had a great sort of introduction to him through some of his oddball films and he brought um, some really great creative sort of like vision to some of the imagery and how it could all tie it together. And it was cool just to find somebody online that way and you know he was up in Loveland and you know we were able to get something going with him and we were lucky enough too where he had a connection at this place called Moss Denver where uh, it's like a wedding venue and uh, they allowed us to film in there and so it's huge expanse of space and uh, he brought a fog machine, we brought mirrors, the projector, and it's kind of played as uh, Chris was kind of talking about, not with a whole lot of strict, or strict structural vision necessarily, all that stuff kind of came a little bit later. But it was really great to be in the space, you know, with the old brick building and uh, running around there is pretty inspiring for sure. So all made locally and um, how much like creative, like it sounds like you guys just kind of went in and kind of were telling him what you wanted to do and kind of told like what could be done is that kind of is that a fair assessment um yeah i think we definitely had like i had a lot of sort of abstract ideas of like thematic concepts and things that i sort of wanted to like drive home in terms of just ideas that i thought were important like the to the song and then very like we didn't have a specific sort of story that would function scene by scene and so i think that was kind of where where Evan sort of filled in the gaps. And so we definitely had like a strong, I guess, creative vision in terms of like the aesthetic and maybe thematic qualities of the video. Um, but 
yeah, but Evan definitely, he did a lot in terms of helping us sort of make the thing, um, you know, concrete, um, you know, to give it sort of like the, the sheen, you know, and like the, the, the texture that it has. Um, so yeah, no, but we definitely, we definitely went into it with like, um, you know, themes and ideas. And, and I definitely thought like, there was this element of time and time running out and like the spinning plate was for me like a kind of clock and, and I thought that was like an interesting image and of course like the the just all the projector stuff that we wanted to incorporate and a lot of the abstract imagery overlaid and um have this like old timey thing we played around with this idea of having found footage but it was kind of hard to like clear that and that would turn out to be a lot of additional work as well and um yeah so there was a we just had way too i think we just had way too many concepts when we, first, when we first started out. You had to narrow um, it down. Yeah, so there was definitely this process of like, all right, I get it, you guys like, really like, have a lot of stuff, but we need to, to figure out, you know, what's gonna work and what, you know, how to like thread a line through all of it. A lot of that work <laughs> in the editing floor too, you know, it's like when you're just sitting there with the imagery, that's where a lot of it came together. I mean, we had a bunch of footage. I mean, for example, even just the, Projector abstract imagery had about an hour's worth of that, which that's a lot to go through, you know. I mean, not yeah. to mention all the scenes of us playing or dancing and all that stuff. So, I mean, in the end, like, yeah, kind of like where a lot of the ideas saw their fruition was through editing, you know. So, uh, who edited it? Did you guys have a, a good say in what was going in and what was going out, or was that this other person that helped you? Yeah, that was us with Evan. Um, we went in and sat down with him and he would put together like a cut and then we would go in and pretty much just talk through every moment and every scene and then just say, you know, that we did like this thing and that we didn't really like this and we would kind of want this out and we would sort of talk through why he had sort of left this thing in or why this thing had been, you know, removed or whatever and, and um, sort of justify his decisions and then we would kind of argue for our sort of perspective on different things and come to an agreement. And I mean, it was just, it was very like collaborative, which was cool. Um, and he was very open to, to hearing like what, you know, our, um, what our take was on, 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 on his cuts. And we had sort of several steps in that process. Um, and I think we had, we met with him what, like two or three times um, in the editing process before we started having to do it um, remotely because of uh, quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, it got a little bit more difficult because, of course, you had to put like the notes and everything into um, what was the platform we were using? It was like was Vimeo. It Vimeo? Like, oh, was it Vimeo? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and then uh, and so he he gave us like several several different cuts, and we just got it to a place, you know, where where we felt like it, you know, it was because. I, I mean, I say like as good as it as it could get. Not like not that we were like, well, it's not going to get any better now. But I mean, at some point, you have to be like, all right, we either like go into like some massive reshoot process and add all like the, you know, the stuff that like you know, or we we like walk away from it. And I don't feel that we left it in a place where it was like we were like abandoning it in any way. Um, I think that we we got to a place where like we could watch the whole thing and felt the momentum was good and actually wanted to watch it more than once, you know, which is actually similar to the process of that I think that we felt in the studio as well with the album, you know, where, where you just have like a certain, cause you can listen to something to death and watch it to death and, and, and you'll get to this point where you just can't hear it anymore and it just kind of ceases to give you the ability to like produce dopamine in your brain and you've gone to this place where you're just kind of, you, you've sort of heard it to death or watch it to death or whatever. Yeah um and and it's just kind of like playing on you to a degree uh and, and then it gets really difficult to make a decision but i do think that you're you just you still you can still make these decisions on your you know based on your on your intuition and your, or your gut or something you can still kind of get a sense of it and i do feel like i got to this place where we could watch it through and be like all right yeah now i can feel that like i'm still i'm still engaged with it or like my brain is still sort of active you know i'm still sort of in like some kind of dialogue with it. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. So what was the uh, most surprising part about making your first music video? Um, what was kind of something that took you by surprise? Any one of you? 
the exactly. smoke and mirrors. <laughs> there was there was Literally. straight up. Yeah, um, but no. Earlier, I was gonna say like um, it was really cool working with Evan because he's like very practical with like what he can do and what he can like make happen. Um, and there was one point when we were sort of talking about the idea of stop motion. Um, and so so he sort of had the idea. Um, in combining the projector and the idea of stop motion to do multiple slides. So he took like, basically he took a video of us playing and then split it into half, half speed frames. And then I literally went to Kinko's and we got them like printed out. Um, and they were like transparencies, like in a math class, like in seventh grade or something. And then Will went through, it took like two hours with all of our friends just trying to stay still in this frame. Um, and went one by one with these transparencies and it came out in this sort of like glitchy stop motion um type thing which was which was really cool and i would have never thought to do that you know but evan just made it happen so well, it yeah. was funny that moment of when we were animating because we wanted the audience in there as well and everybody's sitting there like floors are concrete and my friends have had some beers they're like it's hard to sit still right now we're like i know you guys just hold on we're almost there <laughs> Yeah, as you see our buddy moving all over the place. Yeah. yeah, our buddy Marcus, his head is just wavering the most. Everyone's very still. <laughs> right up to that. <laughs> yeah. um, so how long did it take to do the filming? Like, was it over a couple of days? Was it a full day? Or, I mean, did you have to go back and do some extra things? Three nights? I think it was like four, maybe four total shoots. Like, um, we did one at our music space. Um, which is right, right next door to where I live. Um, and I don't know if we ever used any of those shots. Um, but then we went to the wedding venue and I think we did three full nights from like, I don't know, like six o'clock till like three in the morning sometimes, um, which was honestly just a blast. It was really fun. Um, and the space was really cool. Okay, there's a story that I don't know. Can we tell the story about when we were leaving for tour? <laughs> Um, at this point, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I spoiled it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. I don't think anyone's gonna see it. So, um, we we ended up hooking up my Spotify account to their like surround sound system. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so and so, I was using I was using that to play like the song. Um, so every time we would we would record a scene, we'd be playing along to, um, you know. The, the song obviously anyways like two weeks later um we're leaving for tour and i notice on my phone it says like hooked up to some something johnson's account i can't remember her name and i probably shouldn't disclose it anyways but um <laughs> and it was like timeless love classics or something it was like some random playlist i was like i swear i'm not listening to this like it's not me um and and then i realized that there was only one other place where my account was hooked up and it was at this wedding venue and so we realized there's probably an event going on. <laughs> and what we could do is on one phone, you can like wirelessly like DJ to another, um, to like their iPad. So we started playing like Death Grips or something like that. Put <laughs> <Like, laughs> on Ornette Coleman 3 Yeah, we were like wirelessly DJing this wedding. We don't know. During like first dance or something like that. See, well, now yeah. they know. Now it's on record. And the funny thing is we were actually driving by Moss on the way out of town. So we just took like a two or three block detour, just kind of looked in and there definitely were like people in suits all milling about. We're like, what's happening? All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> drive, drive, drive. Um, mm. So now that we are on quarantine, what, is, what does life look like for the band Kilter? Are you guys able to meet and talk? Are you still doing any sort of practice or is it kind of just like, you know, just practice on your own and we'll talk and see each other when we can Christmas see each other? It's going crazy. Um, yeah, I've been just writing a bunch of stuff recently. And you've been um, going live quite often as well for various groups. Well, we haven't been, yeah, well, I've, I mean, we've done a couple, we've gone live a couple times. Um, and then when quarantine really hit, we stopped like meeting up and doing um, kind of the full band live performances. Um, at some point, I'm certain we'll do sort of like a live performance where we kind of record our parts separately. You know, where I'll do like maybe a looping thing and then we'll kind of record, like Will and Michael will record their parts and then we'll sort of put it together or something. But um, but yeah, at the minute I'm just coming, you know, putting some songs together and then we'll probably just start producing the next thing here soon. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. I think at, at the minute it's just mainly writing more stuff. I think that's the ne like just the next kind of plan. Um, you know, I just got Ableton and that's been really fun and actually like really kind of a perfect software for me just in the way that I already kind of do things live. So, um, so that's been really entertaining and we had tons of demos um, from just jamming together and making things and um, Will and Michael have been sending me little clips of things they've been doing and so I've been kind of throwing those into, into uh, stuff I've been doing. So yeah, at the minute it's just been that, which has been really good because it's been kind of an introspective time for me. Um, Will and I are, are um, uh, self-isolating kind of on, on our own, you know, so, um, you know, I think we're both kind of in that, in that place as well. Yeah, we have perfect. seen each other, but doing kind of social distance sort of hangouts or whatever. Right. Um, and hopefully at some point we can um, meet up here soon and, and, you know, maybe kind of co-produce something or come up with something. And luckily we actually had already made quite a few things together. So it's just a matter of, I think, um, you know, putting some arrangements together and, and seeing kind of what we come up with and and yeah been like coming up with some really good ideas and stringing together like one concept in particular that's been hanging in my head for a little while and um so we'll see what happens but i think you know we'll I'm, i've been getting to work on on kind of the next phase of stuff and i'm actually really excited about it so um yeah it's it's been you know thriving <laughs> good to release the video as well just because we've been on creatures of habit for a while and we're ready for what's next you know and excited for all the new songs as they're building up and they're taking shape and it's kind of like having the video at this time is kind of like a good little cap and like all right we got more stuff you know we're excited for it still moving forward well good the new music video for if i lead is out now chris is taking over our instagram today so thank you so much for stopping by and talking guys thank you See ya. Thanks so much.